he, he was a marvelous interviewer, and so we used him a lot in that uh, jazz oral history project. And he interviewed a number of people, and uh, needless to say, was very good at it, and got answers and reactions that some, you know, au fait journalist might not have gotten. And, but the most unusual uh, <laughs> was an interview with Teddy Wilson, which is very good in many ways, but totally out of left field. <clears throat> he asked him about Billy Holiday and everything. Teddy says that Billy was not his favorite singer. He says he sounded too much like Louie. And then he mentions but what's it going to Milt says, what, who did you like? He never mentions Mildred Bailey, who was so in love with him, you know, musically and has all that nice, and who really got him together with Benny at a party at Red's and, and Milt, never mentions her. And Milt didn't bring her up, but probably because he really wasn't aware of that. But he says that, you know, Milt says, what, well, who did you like? And he mentions this pretty awful singer who recorded with Claude Hopkins' band. I can't think of her name now. I, I, I know it. Her name was Beverly White. Yeah. And she went as Baby White. Yeah. And she popped up many years later claiming that she was Art Tatum's illegitimate daughter. Do you remember that? <laughs> no, that part I don't remember. <laughs> that kind of petered out. <clears throat> but she's, you know, I mean, you know from those records, I mean, she has a high voice and is not, you know, in any way, in any way comparable to Billie Holiday. I mean, but I thought that one of the reasons why Teddy had that reaction was that the recordings they made together were under his name. But they became known for Billy. Now, Teddy was, was there, but Billy was, even when they were reissued, her name was in larger type than his. And that may have been why he reacted that way. But it's also possible that he really preferred a female voice that was higher and more, shall we say, Pure than Billy's, and then he says Billy's too much like Louis. He loved Louis. I mean, he made a statement about Louis, which in capsule form, you know, which is just about one of the best things as a summary of of, of Louis that anybody did. But as far as singing goes, Phil Shap once did a thing on his KCR show. He slowed down Billy's Pennies from Heaven with uh, Teddy. He slowed it down and <laughs> it sounds like Louie. <laughs> One thing, I may have mentioned that, but not. Barry Harris was on a package tour uh, with uh, Billy and a bunch of younger musicians, you know, and they were on a road stop and went to have lunch or dinner somewhere in the theater. And uh, it, be, it wasn't a big band, it was where people were in auditory, you know, distance from each other. And Barry says these younger guys got on a kick where they were talking about Louie and putting him down and calling him Uncle Tom or whatever. And he said, it went on for a while, and Billy stood up and she said, God bless Louis Armstrong, he toms from the heart. Uh, I always thought the, the Billy and Teddy Fit, if it was, as you say, he lived on 30 years after her death, almost, and she was a greater and greater star in those years than he had been. But I thought there was something else, and I would want your reaction. He was well behaved. 
He was well brought up. He was a Tuskegee graduate. He was immaculate in everything. And Billy in some way was a street kid who you probably had to get her into the session where she was smoking dope in the hall. I don't and think I, so, no. no. I no. I thought it was a I, class I, I, I think that was, a, well, I mean, getting high, in a, which is now legal and, and yeah. should have been legal a long time ago, everybody did that, in, 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 including Teddy, who, by the way, was a drinker. And in his later years, the drinking uh, sometimes got the better of him. I remember one of Dick Gibson's parties where everybody was waiting uh, for Teddy, who was in the next group, you know, and he didn't show. And this was, you know, the parties were usually in a hotel somewhere where the musicians were housed as well. So they went looking for him. And uh, the musician who went, it may have been Milt, whoever it was, he got into the room, it was locked, I got in, and he was passed out in the bathtub from it. But he had a, I mean, this is all so long ago, and I mean, nobody's going to sue me or anything. I think Teddy had a thing with women, you know. I remember one of his wives, he had several, uh, was somebody, she was a very pretty girl, and uh, I was always hanging out at this place that we talked about the copper rail. For some reason, uh, we were sitting at the bar together and she was obviously not happy about something. And what said she had just recently broken up with Teddy and, and she started telling me, you know, that he was mean to her and all this stuff. and stuff. His first wife uh, was Edie, uh, well, she was Edie Armstrong, but not with Louis, she had an Armstrong. She eventually, uh, well, anyway, she was a pianist and a very good one who had a reputation in, in Chicago. When Teddy came to Chicago, uh, uh, she was known as, as Edie Armstrong for a while. The other last name I can't think of right now. She never made any records. It's one with uh, Paramount where she accompanies a not very great blues singer. who's sort of more of a vaudeville singer, but blues singer. Uh, and I found this, I looked for this, it's a Paramount, and it, uh, I looked for it for years. And I finally found it in an auction, so I got it for 75 bucks. And I gave it to the Institute because that's where it should be. But Bud Johnson is the one who told me that, and he was, you know, he was in the band with Teddy and Louie's band. He said that, that this woman, who had a band of her own at one time, which Bud says what it was a terrific band, not big, but like a seven or eight piece group, something like that. He said that this Edie taught Teddy, he said she taught him everything he knows about music, you know. Not he had musical training at Tuskegee, but he meant jazz and thing about that. So there is uh, another thing about Teddy and a woman, because he never talked about her, he never gave her credit for anything. So, you know, I mean, there may have been something there with Billy which went beyond the musical thing. And I don't think, Billy was very professional, I never heard of her, you know, showing up late for a session and until much later, but not during the Teddy day. But she says in her book, you know, she, when she recorded with Teddy, it was under Teddy's name, vocal by Billie Holiday. When she recorded under her own name, it was Billie Holiday. When she recorded with Teddy, John Hammond produced the sessions. When she recorded under her own name, it was, uh, oh, guy who, uh, uh, he was, uh, among other things, he wrote a couple of really nice songs. He, One he, of them, he, Bernie Hannigan. Okay. Bernie Hannigan. And he wrote if the he wrote if the moon turns green, I think. Hmm? I, I think he wrote if the moon turns green. Yeah, exactly. If the moon yeah. turns, which is a beautiful song, that Billy recorded much later, and somebody else should do it. 
I think Taft Jordan recorded it yes. too with a small band. It's a lovely song, really nice lyrics too, you know. And uh, yeah, Bernie was uh, somebody that Billy speaks well of in her autobiography. She obviously is that she liked him better than John. And she says on those, she says, on those records I wasn't anybody's damn vocalist. <laughs> so, you know, there was something there. But anyway, that interview with Milt, uh, in other respects, is, is a terrific interview because as you said, you know, Teddy was, was very intelligent and very well spoken and, and he talks about Milt of course asks him about the, the uh, getting with Benny and whether there was any uh, prejudice anything involved there and Teddy says absolutely not and he says within the band he says uh, Italian Jewish but whatever, everybody, everybody, there was no problem at all, no trouble whatsoever, which is nice to hear. But you know, things like that, like Teddy saying that he didn't care for Billy Holiday, you know, that's unusual, but there are things in these interviews that will surprise you about the way musicians feel about each other or what, uh, you know, some other personal things. <laughs> the interviewers also uh, sometimes, most of them, you know, we picked them to be, Pat Willard was a terrific one. She is getting a Lifetime Achievement Award uh, next week from the Jazz Journalist Association. And she knows more about Duke Ellington than any 10 other people put together. Uh, but uh, it, 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 she was a, a, a terrific interviewer, for the, especially of uh, Ellington people. Her interview with Lawrence Brown is great. Lawrence did not really 100% love Duke Ellington. There are the things like that that come out in the interviews. But, uh, what did I want to bring up? Oh, the little, you know, anecdotes and things like about, you know, Benny Carter not being welcome back at that, <laughs> at that bed and board thing, uh, which is humorous and some of the things are not humorous at all, uh, having to do with encounters with racism and uh, but from a musical standpoint, it will be interesting. And that one thing that runs through everything almost is reactions to Louis. Uh, certainly, of course, you would expect it from trumpet players, but from others too. And lovely stories, like I, I, I think I mentioned this already, like. Herschel Evans was not a very good reader. He was on a session with Lionel Hampton. I think I talked yeah. about that. Yeah, it's a beautiful yeah. Story. with Harry. And, uh, so you get a feeling for all that, positive and negative. Uh, and it really should, you know, if I was if I was sixty, I would try to put all this stuff nuggets together. But as I say, the thing about Louis is, uh, is really there to our first encounters with Louis and what they meant and of the trumpet players, of course. Uh, so we were supposed to talk about... Let me, let me stop you. Uh,